No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by My Road Reel, the world's largest short film competition, is back. Shutterstock, your source for stunning HD and 4K footage, plus high quality music. Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post production, and television. Hey, I'm Ryan with No Film School. We're here with Alan at the Abbott booth. Uh, we're going to talk about media composer, video editing, what's uh, new here at NAB. Hey, uh, thanks, Ryan. It's nice to be here. So uh, one of the big news things we announced is the fact that we're supporting Adobe Premiere Pro on our uh, Media Central UX platform. It's kind of our way of uh, proclaiming to the world that we're really the most open platform out there now. I mean, uh, historic per perception for whatever reason was is that Avid was the closest. And what we've done is we've made our connectivity toolkit available for everybody in the industry to develop for the platform. Uh, we're holding nothing back. It's all of our secret sauce. Our historic secret sauce is now fully available through our connectivity toolkit. And what you see with Premiere is now uh, the Adobe Premiere Pro product is a first class client on our, our Interplay production asset management system, for example, which means that you can look at all of the assets on your shared store, drag and drop them into the timeline, do your custody, your edits, round trip, bring the sequence back into Media Central, for example, in Finishing in Symphony or continuing editing inside Media Composer. Uh, in our own products, Media, Media Composer, uh, our version 8.5, we, we did a lot of great uh, performance and usability enhancements with the release that just came out earlier this year. With 8.5, you've got uh, great uh, live um, flexible trimming and, and uh, handle trim handle uh, control, dragging and dropping all around. We did um, major enhancements in the audio realm, in addition to like, having 64 audio track support, um, the way that you can m m uh, group them by waveform, et cetera, is far more flexible and powerful than it's ever been before. That, that one feature alone has had Media Composer guys just really excited about it. We uh, greatly increased the overall resolution independence uh, portfolio of codecs being supported, um, so HDR f full support in there now, um, which is really cool. Um, those are some of the highlights off the top of my head that they're new, but they're it's chock full of other usability things. Uh, they they changed some, you know, Media Composer's been around for like, what, 25 years or something like that, and so we took a whole pass on, so what, what are the menu picks, for example, that are being most frequently used versus the ones which, and, and of course it is customizable, but in the default mode we made it very, um, um, at a glance, easy to use, hit some of the stuff that's less used, less important in today's right. uh, all digital production workflow. Right, so obviously Avid in use at major studios, major motion pictures, but yeah. on the thousand dollar software, mm -hmm. you know, that range, uh, if someone hasn't checked in on Media Composer for a while, like how do you see your, yourself positioned and, and how would you uh, see yourself in the, the editing market? Yeah, so great, thanks. Great question. So where we're seeing a, a lot of adoption is in the um, colleges, universities, and, and, and communications programs because they, they realize that this is still the most widely used tool for, as you say, professional film and television production. And we've been very honored that we've gotten a lot of those cus customers up here speaking on our behalf on the main stage. It's always a highlight for folks who get to NAB. So if you haven't been to NAB and you come next year, make sure you swing by because you get to see people who worked on Star Wars or on The Revenant or you know um, The Voice on NBC, which is, which is really cool stuff to hear these guys, how they're actually working with the tools to create their art. I got shivers down my spine when I heard these guys speaking and the entire hall fills up with people to, just to hear these um, free presentations. So we're, we're seeing a lot of adoption there and of course you know we, we've got the major um, me media production hubs uh, uh, using our tool. I mean when you see the nominees for best Oscar at a film edit, et cetera, those are, we run the table every year in terms of folks who are using media composer, film composer to do that. And there's, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the pricing of Media Composer and then also if someone wants to cut their teeth in it, how they would get started? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, we've got two ways in which folks can um, access it from a from a licensing standpoint. There's um, uh, what we call a perpetual license, which is like the way we all used to buy software. You just buy a license and you're good to go for, for life. Um, that's $12.99 and that includes a one year of um, Avid Stellar customer support right there uh, built into that price. You can also purchase it on a um, uh, subscription license and that's, um, that's uh, you can get that for uh, $49.99 a month um, to, to, to get do, it do you, do you need like an annual contract for that or you just... You, you, you could do an annual contract or you could do it on a monthly basis as well. A little, little different pricing for monthly versus annual subscription. And then uh, they, we have the Media Composer First which we announced right along with Pro Tools first, 
which um, is free and it's not yet available, but um, when it is available, it's a great way for folks to start cutting their teeth on the whole Media Composer editorial experience, which is really the editorial experience that all the other editors have tried to emulate. So why mess with the copies? Deal with the best. Great. That's the latest from Avid here at NAB.